How to build a volume booster pedal. If you are brand new to building pedals, this is a great way to get started because it's an easy, low parts count pedal with a low price tag. Get your solos heard with some extra volume on tap. Tools and supplies used in this video. An LPB1 style booster kit with pre-drilled enclosure from Stompbox Parts, a soldering iron, solder, side cutters, rocket sockets or equivalent nut drivers, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a mini flat head screwdriver. Some optional but recommended tools are a multimeter for troubleshooting, desoldering braid or needles for correcting mistakes, tweezers for working in tight places, wire strippers for cutting and stripping wires to custom lengths. Our kits come with pre-cut and pre-stripped wire. Begin by sorting your kit. There should be a pre-drilled 125B enclosure with screws, a pedal PCB APB circuit board, six resistors in five different values, one 1N5817 diode, two 100 nanofarad film capacitors, one 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, one 2N5088 transistor, one A100K potentiometer, one knob, an essentials hardware kit with a foot switch, two quarter inch jacks, DC jack, LED and LED bezel, and lastly, a baggie of pre-cut, pre-stripped wire. Let's start soldering. We're going to assemble this PCB in order of shortest components to tallest components, so we will start with resistors. Resistors look like this and will go into their corresponding spots circled here. Take your 4.7K resistor, bend the legs close to the body, and insert into the spot labeled 4K7 on the PCB. You can keep the legs straight or bend them to hold them in place, up to you. Keeping them straight will make it easier to remove later if necessary, but bending them adds mechanical strength. Grab your iron, clean the tip, then add a little bit of solder to the tip. Wedge the tip of the iron between the component leg and the silvery PCB pad. Wait a second or two, add solder until it flows, hold for another second, then remove the iron. Solder both ends of the resistor and clip the excess leg above the solder joint. Grab your 100K resistor and do the same thing. Bend the legs, insert into the board, and solder it in. Repeat with the rest of the resistors until all of them have been soldered onto the PCB. Take your time and double check parts and placement along the way to ensure the right parts are going into the correct places. It is much more difficult to correct an error than it is to do it correctly the first time. Now, find your 1N5817 diode. Diodes have polarity, so line up the side with the band to the side with the line on the PCB. If you solder this in backwards, the pedal will not turn on. Load the diode into the board, double check the polarity, and solder it in just like the resistors. Next, find the 100N film caps. They will go here on the board. These capacitors have no polarity and it does not matter which direction you solder them in. Next, take the 2N5088 transistor. It goes here on the PCB. This part has polarity and must get soldered in with the flat side of the transistor, matching the flat side of the diagram on the PCB. Double check polarity and solder it in. Now grab the 100U electrolytic capacitor. This part also has polarity. The PCB marks the plus side and the capacitor marks the negative side. Plus goes to plus and minus goes to minus. Double check polarity and solder it in. The board is now full of parts. Time to add wires. You can install these from the top or the bottom of the board, but they will be easier to see if soldered from beneath. Take four short wires and solder each one, one at a time, into the top four pads on the PCB. Take four more short wires and do the same thing on the pads at the bottom of the board. Time to add the potentiometer. Remove the pot hardware and pinch the legs together so it grips the board, and install it here on the PCB. Mount this assembly on the top of the drilled enclosure to keep it steady, and do your best to keep the board level and solder the pot in, being careful not to melt any nearby wires. Feel free to bend them out of the way if you need. Now. Grab the LED bezel and push it through the hole for the LED from the inside of the enclosure. Find the LED. This part has polarity. 
the long leg of the LED is the anode and goes to the A mark on the PCB. The short leg is the cathode and goes to the K mark on the PCB. The cathode side is also slightly flattened on the rim of the LED. Install the LED on the bottom side of the PCB, and double check the polarity, and insert it into the pedal. Line up the pot and the LED with the holes on the enclosure, and loosely install the pot washer and nut if you're having a hard time keeping the board level and steady. Push the LED as far as it will go into the bezel, and solder it in. Time to wire up the foot switch. Grab the 3PDT foot switch and install it finger tight on the top of the enclosure. Grab a clipped component leg and shape it so it fits in these outer bottom lugs of the foot switch. Solder in this jumper wire on both sides. Now, make another jumper wire and insert through these two points. Don't let it rest on any other lugs or the other jumper wire. Only solder in the bottom lug for now. We'll get to the other one soon. Trim off the excess. Now, take the wire from the pad labeled in and run it to this lug with the unsoldered jumper wire. Solder them all in. Next, take the wire from the pad labeled SW. This wire connects the LED when the pedal is on. Solder it into this lug here. Following the same pattern, take the wire from the pad labeled out and solder it into this lug here. Now, take the ground wire from the pad labeled GND and run it to this lug in the middle. Solder it in and be careful not to melt other wires nearby. Unmount the assembly and install the bezel through the top of the enclosure. With the foot switch, make sure there's one nut turned all the way down the threads and put the star washer on next. Take the PCB and foot switch assembly, carefully line everything up, and mount it inside the enclosure. Take the pot hardware, install the washer, and then install the nut. Tighten it down with a 10 millimeter rocket socket, just past finger tight. It doesn't need to be torqued down very hard. With the foot switch, put the flat washer on top, then install the last nut for the switch. Tighten it down with a 14 millimeter rocket socket and hold the switch to prevent it from twisting. It's starting to look like a pedal now. Grab the DC jack, remove the hardware, but leave on the star washer and install the jack from the inside of the pedal. Put the flat washer back on and tighten down the nut. Take the negative power wire coming from the minus pad and poke it into the lug for the center pin of the DC jack. That's this wire and lug on this diagram. Solder it in while being mindful of other nearby wires. Feel free to bend them out of the way if you need. Now, do the same thing with the positive or plus power wire. Poke it into the lug on the power jack right here and solder it in. Next, take your quarter inch jacks and remove the hardware. Insert the jacks into these holes. Orient them so that the lug on the slanted edge of the jack is facing inward and the lug on the flat edge is towards the enclosure wall. Here's a clip for reference. The slanted edge is the ground connection, while the straight edge carries the signal. Install the hardware and tighten down the nuts. Route one of the ground wires from the top of the PCB to the slanted ground lug on the jack. Solder it in. Do the same thing with the other jack and solder it in. Now, take one of the longer pre-cut wires and run it from the right middle lug of the foot switch to the straight edge of the jack on the same side. Solder it in on both ends. Do the same with the last long wire. Run it from the left foot switch lug to the jack. Solder it in on both ends. You are done soldering. Take the knob and tighten it down on the pot with the small flathead screwdriver. Now would be a great time to plug it in and test it out. If signal passes, you successfully built a boost pedal. Nice job. All that's left is to install the lid with the Phillips head screwdriver. And that's it. You are done. If this is your first pedal, congratulations. You just made a super useful pedal for not a lot of money. Hopefully you had some fun along the way. Like, subscribe, and check out our website. Happy building!